The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Mary's Church grounds here in Buntlody. And as I look at the church in front of me, behind me is the main road and it looks up on this wonderful hillside. And given that one can now see the, the church as the the very overgrown rhododendron that was here and was attracting quite a bit of attention, mainly in the form of uh, drinking parties, as you can see from there are cans and glass and so forth all around. Uh, but now we have an opportunity uh, not just to see the church, but also to create a symbol of what the church stands for. And as we read in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, God is love and what better symbol to convey that than the cross and a heart especially for those that are driving by that may not be aware of Christ and the love that God showed by sending us his son when they see a heart uh, they certainly will know there is something to do with love going on there and so we will have a raised bed here um, and it'll be marked out um, and the after it's all been cleaned up um, and planted with um, plants that attract um, pollinators and uh, create a habitat uh, to convey that God's love is beyond us and beyond um, all of the animals and plants that we can see to all life. Um, and that life will be, if you like, represented in some of its wide diversity here as well. And where did that idea come from? Well, it came about three months ago, um, nearly three months ago, um, when two parishioners uh, were married here, um, Tracy Murphy and Barry Deacon. And when they exchanged their, their vows um, here at St. Mary's Church, they invited um, those of us who were here to their wedding reception. And each guest um, at their place setting um, was uh, given um, a small wooden heart. Thank you for sharing our special day, Tracy and Barry, 24th of April 2022. And that heart, the shape of that heart, is what is represented um, in a larger scale here around me. And as that is marked out with, um, with lime, um, and, uh, and then um, we will have a, a beautiful drone um, uh, image of that, thanks to uh, Maura Kavanagh's uh, son-in-law, um, James, who, who will be uh, sending up his drone so we see the church and this shape of a heart um, before it takes shape as um, a flower bed uh, to convey that message of the gospel. God is love to all who pass by this church. So enjoy the footage and then let us worship.
So wasn't that wonderful? Now you know what it feels like to be one of those swifts flying around the church here as the sun draws in. And so we come to our prayers. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and we repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And so our first reading is from the Old Testament, from the prophet Amos, who doesn't hold back when he is reminding people that unless they love their neighbours, love justice, and can translate God's love into love of neighbour, then God really finds them quite repulsive, actually. So, Amos chapter 8, verses 1 to 12. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people, Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings on that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over, so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephod small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a poor pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and every one mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon, and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins, and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only sun, and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The appointed psalm on this, the fifth Sunday after Trinity, is Psalm 52. Why do you glory in evil, you tyrant, while the goodness of God endures continually? You plot destruction, you deceiver. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor. You love evil rather than good, falsehood rather than the word of truth. You love all words that hurt, O you deceitful tongue. Therefore God shall utterly bring you down. He shall take you and pluck you out of your tent, 
and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see this and tremble. They shall laugh you to scorn and say, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great riches and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a spreading olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the goodness of God for ever and ever. I will always give thanks to you for what you have done. I will hope in your name, for your faithful one delights in it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 28. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the Church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so to our hymn, hymn number three. And just as the heart-shaped flower bed in front of St. Mary's Church is a reminder of this verse, so this hymn uses those words from the first John chapter four, verse eight. God is love. God is love, let heaven adore him. God is love, let earth rejoice. Let creation sing before him and exalt him with one voice. He who laid the earth's foundation, he who spread the heavens above, he who breathes through all creation, he is love, eternal love. God is love, and he is enfolding all the world in one embrace. 
His unfailing grasp is holding every child of every race. And when human hearts are breaking under sorrow's iron rod, then they find that self-same aching deep within the heart of God. God is love, and though with blindness sin afflicts and clouds the will, God's eternal loving kindness holds us fast and guides us still. Sin and death and hell shall never o'er us final triumph gain. God is love, so love forever o'er the universe must reign. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Luke, chapter 10, beginning at verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by, by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So very often people ask, are you a Martha or are you a Mary in that particular gospel context? And to be quite honest, I think many of us probably identify with Martha because many of us are, I would guess, pulled in many different directions. I certainly know that I am. Um, there are many causes for um, being worried and many ways in which we can be distracted. These are all pretty common experiences. And yet, as Jesus says in Luke 12, verse 28, can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? So we know that worrying does no good, and yet we cannot seem to help it. There's anxiety and we have anxious thoughts and frantic activity in response to deadlines and other things that are on our agenda. And it's true that much of our busyness and distraction seems to stem from the noblest of intentions. We want to provide for our families. We want to give our children every opportunity to enrich their lives. We want to serve our neighbours. And yes, we also want to serve the Lord. I mean, where would the church be without all of the Marthas that are busy and providing hospitality preparing for our parish fete on Sunday the 30th of this month, 30th of July, in, in the rectory, all very welcome. Uh, please do come, you should enjoy it, I'd say. Um, and all of those people are essential, and they are doing things for the best of intentions, and are essential to a well-functioning church and well-functioning community all around us here in Bunclody and beyond. And yet, if all our activities leave us with no time to be still, then all of that good work, unfortunately, becomes joyless and stressful and even resentful 
um, of others. And so when Jesus gives us the two commandments that we read at our service of Holy Communion, to love God and love our neighbour, both are essential. And loving our neighbour without setting aside time to love God is going to unfortunately take the joy out of all of that good service. So, to me, there's a wonderful verse that I'll just finish on really from Matthew. And I remember hearing this in Taizé in France repeatedly. And it's, a, it's from Matthew um, 11, uh, verse 28 to 30. And it really is worth meditating on, reflecting on, and repeating the words of Jesus. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And let that sink in. And then while we're busy being Martha, may we also have time to be Mary also. Amen. And so we turn to proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. So let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers, and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. And on this, the fifth Sunday after Trinity, our Collect, Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified. Hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And finally, our blessing, and a prayer from page 162 of the Book of Common Prayer, which goes as follows. In peace and unity, may your people offer the unfailing sacrifice of praise and make your glory known through their service, through their worship, and through the proclamation of love which this heart-shaped flower bed represents. And through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, and with all those you hold in your heart, this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>